Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Oscar and today we have another video on getting to know the BRCGS standard. Uh, and But we're going to focus on production risk zones as defined by the standard itself. So what's the purpose of production risk zones? Um, simply put, they ensure that the production facilities and controls are suitable to prevent pathogen contamination of products. That's pretty much the whole aim of those production risk zones. Uh, and today we're focusing on high risk, high care zones. Uh, now, some of you might remember uh, the old BRCGS standard used to include a decision tree uh, to help determine which zone your product should be uh, uh, packed in. Um, however, it is no longer available. Um, it, it was, you know, it was con causing some confusion um, sometimes where people, you know, we've uh, uh, same product, same processes well falling in different production risk zones. Uh, however, they kept the same definitions um, and this is what we're going to be focusing on today uh, in this video. So the definitions uh, are what we must rely on to determine the requirements for packing in these specific areas. Uh, and also I want to mention a common mistake uh, is confusing high risk foods with risk zones. Yeah, so high risk foods are those prone to the growth of survival and of pathogens, things like cooked food, you know, ready to eat meals. Uh, but the, today our focus is on the zones, yeah, the areas in which these foods are handled. Um, so in the, in the next part, we'll just break down these definitions and explain uh, what's required to, to meet uh, the standards for high-risk, high-care. Uh, and we're also going to look at ambient uh, high-care. Um, so let's have a look at together. We're starting with uh, high-risk here, yeah, which is the, the, the highest level of, uh, of hygiene, really. Uh, and uh, to pack in a high-risk, uh, it must be a physically segregated area. Um, and the aim, as we've said, to prevent contamination by uh, pathogenic microorganisms, yeah? Um, and we have to remember here is that to pack in high-risk area, yeah, we must meet all the following. It says right here, the standard says we must meet all the following bullet points. So first one, finished product requiring cheating or freezing during storage to preserve food safety, yeah? Not from a food quality point of view. Then the second one, very important, all components, yeah, all of them, have received a full cook process to a minimum of 70 degrees for two minutes or equivalent. We've got the appendix free that can help us out. Uh, and that is before entry to the area. Yeah, so only after that full cook process, this is where the area will become a high risk. The third condition here is that those finished products are vulnerable to the growth of pathogen or the survival of pathogens. Yeah, uh, which could subsequently grow during the normal storage or use of the product. And then the Fourth um, requirement is that the finished product are ready to eat, ready to heat, uh, or on the basis of non-consumer use are likely to be eaten without adequate cooking. Yeah. So, you know, if if your product does not meet one of those bullet points, that means you're not packing a high risk area. Yeah. You're moving to the next one, and you see if you if you meet the uh, the other production risk zone uh, requirements. But what I wanted to add about high risk areas. Uh, is that they must uh, have positive air pressure and the air within the area must be controlled. So it must be filtered. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and as auditors, usually we have to check, you know, th that those HEPA filters are changed regularly and uh, and the specification of them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here they're giving us some example in the standard as well of what could fall into the high risk area. Here we've got the cooked crustaceans um, or, you know, cooked meats, et cetera, et cetera. Then let's have a look at the high care zones. So high care uh, is pretty much the same uh, principles as high risk. Um, and we must also meet all the following criteria. So finished product same, requiring cheating or freezing during storage. Yeah, again, to preserve food safety. Um, and here, that's the, that's the main change between high risk and high care. Here we've got all microbiologically susceptible components have received a process to reduce the micro contamination to an acceptable level. Yeah. Um, typically one to two level reduction of microorganisms such as listeria species. Yeah. And that's again before entry to the area. Yeah. Very likely that before obviously that micro kill step, uh, you have been packing in a low risk area. Um, and the third bullet point, same thing, um, finished product vulnerable to the growth of pathogens or the survival of them. Yeah. Uh, and the fourth one is exactly the same, ready to eat, ready to heat or likely to be eaten without adequate cooking, yeah? So again, the only changes between high risk and high care really here as per the definition is that second bullet point, yeah? High risk, everything must be fully cooked, all components, and high care is only microbiologically susceptible components to, to have received a micro kill step, yeah? Such as 
uh, chlorine wash, for example, in uh, in fresh produce. Um, and they're also giving some example of different products that could fall into that uh, area, such as prepared salads, uh, etc. And then we've got ambient high care, uh, and ambient high care is pretty much the same as high care. Uh, the, the the main changes here is that the product uh, the products are not chilled and not frozen, uh, but they are stored at ambient temperatures. Yeah, um, but it's remained the same. We need to meet all the following: raw material is prone to contamination with a vegetative pathogen such as salmonella. Um, and we've got a process step, yeah, which reduce the pathogens, either remove it or reduce it to the acceptable level, uh, like we mentioned, that micro kill step. Um, and then a same ready to eat, ready to heat, uh, or uh, eaten without adequate cooking. And finished product are um, such that vegetative pathogen could survive and grow in normal use. Yeah. Um, so here we've got, for example, um, example like um, milk powder from uh, raw liquid milk. Yeah, would be packed in ambient high care. Um, and that's pretty much everything um, about the production risk zones. Um, as I said, we focused on really high risk high care and ambient high care, but we also have the low risk area, uh, which is very, very common, uh, obviously, and, and a lot of manufacturers obviously will pack in, uh, in low risk. And we also have enclosed product areas, which is pretty self-explanatory. So we're not going to uh, uh, define this uh, in this video. And that's pretty much everything. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to, to our channel for more videos on, uh, on food safety topics. Thank you and bye.